Hey Z Stars, it's your girl Zara, popularly known as FXR, and I'm back, back, back with another video. Now, obviously, we're in a very different place. If you've been here, you know that. If you've never been here, welcome. We're in my Porsche Panamera Executive. It's Turbo S car, so it's really fun and really fast, and you're probably like, well, why are we in your nice car? <laughs> well, we're here because we're going to be doing more serious videos from this environment. I want to try something a bit different. Um... And I think that this is a great setting, a fun setting to do those kinds of videos in. Now, today I want to talk about the <laughs> pandemic. Now, I probably bleeped that out. And if I did, you all have seen it on the screen because I'm not trying to get this demonetized. But even if it does get demonetized, this is an important topic to talk about. So I'm going to chat about it anyway. Now, I don't want to waste any time. So before we get into this topic, please be sure to do the four simple things I always ask you to do. Please be sure to comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and your feelings regarding this particular issue. Please be sure to share this video with everyone because everyone needs to hear this message. Please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that our voices need to be heard and that this kind of content needs to be shared. And last but never ever least, please subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video let me know also if you like this idea because i'd like to do more videos like this where we talk about things that are a bit more serious in my porsche or any other car in the compound so let's get right into the video if you're not already make sure you're following me on instagram via epic zara e-f-i-k-z-a-r-a there you can see all my lovely pics and interact with me. And be sure to also follow me on Twitter via FXR, the same E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. -A. There I talk to you all, I share my thoughts, and we're going to be doing a lot of giveaways very soon, so stay tuned. So first of all, some of y'all are literally moving what? Mad. That's just what I want to say. Some of you lot are moving mad. That's just the bottom line. Now, obviously, I have a few things I want to talk about in this video, but it's a bit of a different type of video because it's not as structured as my normal format. I'm going to talk about some things very candidly. So let's just start with what is this thing that we're dealing with right now? Like, what is this thing? Basically, what we're dealing with as an entire global society is flipping colloquially known as also known as the or now this is not the first there are several so this is one of many however this is a different strain and it's obviously wreaking quite a bit of havoc on the global population right now now I'm going to cut to a different screen so I can give you all some more information and then we're going to come back Please pause to read. There are many words in these passages that I really can't say on YouTube. I'm also going to have my dear friend, Dr. Raphael, talk about this basically what it is what it does to the body and then we're going to get into my thoughts about this entire situation hello zara and greetings to the global viewers so who am i my name is dr Raphael alaya and i'm a uk london-based emergency medical doctor and from the start of the pandemic i've been treating patients on the front line in the emergency department and as more information has been revealed to us as the medical community, I've been using that information to better treat the patients and to do the best we can to save lives. So what am I gonna be talking about? I'm gonna be talking about, first of all, what is the And second of all, how does it affect the body? How has it been people? And I wanna talk about the patient journey. What happens when they actually come into the hospital and what do we do? So first of all, the comes from a group of called the The actual name is and what groups these together is the fact that, first of all, the structure is the same, the way in which they're spread is pretty much the same, and how they spread to humans is thought to be the same. It's thought that they came from animal hosts. The bat is the main suspect. There were two other popular types of In 2003, there was the SARS. That stands for Severe 
the Cuba respiratory distress and there was the MERS which was the Middle Eastern version that was in 2012. The mortality rate for the SARS was actually around 10% and the mortality rate for the MERS was actually around 30%. The mortality rate for the which we currently have now, is actually just 1%, so a lot less. However, it's a lot more So it being a lot more virulent means that it spreads a lot faster and can affect a lot more people in a short period of time. So that means that a lot more people have died because of that, which is really worrying. So how does the actually affect the patient? How does it harm them? Because it's it spreads all over the body and can have a broad range of symptoms, but there are main symptoms. However, some people with really they might have no symptoms and other people might have very severe symptoms and the symptoms can be very varied. So the main symptoms, first of all, are a dry cough and a fever, a temperature, and also a general feeling of tiredness and what we call malaise or fatigue. Those are the three main symptoms. However, other symptoms which people have complained of in high numbers include um, a headache, diarrhea, dizziness, and other vague symptoms. So how do we diagnose it? There's two main types of tests. There's the swab test, which takes a nasal pharyngeal swab, so right at the back of your nose. It can be really uncomfortable, and it takes around three days to come back. And the swab test, it detects the antigen. There's also an antibody test, which is a blood test, and that's a lot faster. The main difference between the two is that the antigen test, which is the swab that shows if you're shedding the if you're actually infective. After a few weeks, if someone survives the coronavirus, then the swab would be negative. But the antibody test, it would remain positive even when the person stops being infective and the patient is actually better. So I've spoken about the main symptoms that people often get when it comes to However, around 1% of people die and there's a specific set of symptoms that can lead to death when it comes to coronavirus. And that is shortness of breath or dyspnea, as we call it in the medical field, and acute respiratory distress syndrome. And from those two main symptom processes and processes, the person can undergo a multi-organ organ failure. Their kidneys shut down, the heart starts to fail, and the oxygen and gaseous exchange that process starts to fail. And that's the main process that leads to Why does that happen? There's a complex interaction between the virus and the lungs. The lungs is just affected more and it affects the membrane by which gaseous exchange takes place and it disrupts it. So um, the patient gets what we call hypoxia and they go into shock because the body cannot be perfused well enough and oxygen levels are low and the body starts to shut down. So how fast does this happen? Over what period of time? So usually the person starts showing symptoms between five days and 10 days, or it can be up to two weeks. So in between five and 14 days, and we call that period the incubation period. In that two weeks, the virus is growing and developing inside the person's body and they can be infective before they start showing symptoms. So what is the treatment for How do we keep someone alive and stop them from so the mainstay of treatment, first of all, is oxygen therapy. We supplement the patient with more oxygen to stop them from being hypoxic, which means low oxygen. And we can give them empirical antibiotics to guard against other bacterial infections, which might make the situation worse. Other than that, we try to give good nutrition, keep the patient hydrated, but not too hydrated. There's newer, more experimental types of treatment which is being tested and is showing promising results. Examples include um, chloroquine, usually used for malaria, and, and interferon therapy. And over the next few weeks, we're going to see which ones are most effective, um, both cost effective and also clinically effective. Um, I'm looking forward to see what, what we find out there. The information used to make this video and to inform this video are from NHS, the National Health Service of the UK resources that are widely available to medical practitioners and also emedicine.com and all the references are available. At this moment in time, the information was correct. As research improves and moves forward, things could change. Now I know what this is all about. Let's just talk about the public response because I'm literally flipping flabbergasted. Now, as somebody who's literally been hearing about this since December, I don't understand why 
the world leaders took such a lackadaisical approach. I guess there were rumors about it as early as December, but I was getting a lot of tangible information. If I could find exactly what I was seeing, I'll let you all know, but I'm pretty sure CNN was sending alerts to my phone like every blessed day, flipping Al Jazeera, flipping whatever other news source, BBC was BBC. I'll check on that. But I was getting a lot of information about that. I was like, wow. And I was telling my parents, I was like, y'all, am I like actually finna travel in the new year? It's looking like some crazy ish is happening in the world. And the way that people are not actually taking this seriously could become a legitimate thing. And here we are in April 2020 and literally everyone is stuck inside their houses. Now, if we had actually not turned a blind eye to China's plight and taken this thing seriously, actually started closing borders and refusing people coming from China, then I don't think this would be a big issue. Now, obviously there's a lot of money and a lot of transactions that occur when people are allowed to travel, when people are crossing borders, but are those transactions more important than the state of world health? Because right now, literally, the mortality rate is quite high. It's exceeded flipping 100,000 people. And the amount of people that have actually gotten it relative to the amount of people that have died is frightening. It's really quite frightening. Okay, so great. The world was slow to act and we're in this position now. It's really unfortunate. And of course, with the way that these kinds of move and the of this particular, it was probably in these major world hubs like a month plus before it was actually being reported. Let's just be real. So it was already an issue prior to the first case being discovered. But it's just so disheartening that in 2020, 2020, a whole can literally take the entire globe by storm. I feel like we're in a biological and I know that there are a bunch of conspiracies, which I personally won't discuss in this video because I'm gonna leave that up to all of y'all to like raise your own questions and answer them potentially with your own research. But it's just, it's really frightening. And, and it just goes to show that a lot of the leaders heading the world's most metropolitan nations are simply not prepared, are simply not taking things or were not taking things as seriously as they should have and could have. Um, I don't know, you know it's, it's mad, it's mad, it's mad. So now that brings us to where we are now, right? We're in this mess and we have to find a way out of it. How do we get out of it? It's only God that ultimately knows because I cannot tell you how we're going to get out of this nonsense, to be honest. Of course, we're self-isolating, but then you have those crazy individuals, those mad people that are leaving their homes for what? Why are you leaving your house? What the hell is wrong with you? Stay indoors. You're part of the problem. It's different if you actually have to work, if you have to work in like maybe a grocery store or a place that provides food for people who desperately need the food, or a pharmacy, any of those very essential types of workplaces. I get it, I get it. But if there's no reason for you to be outside, why are you outside? The selfishness of people as a whole is just like astounding to me. Now I'd like to highlight some very irresponsible behavior before we move on to the next portion of this video. Flipping Vanessa Hudgens, is that even her name? That babe that was in High School Musical. She literally was out here. I mean, she apologized, sure. Let's just take a moment to recognize that. But she was literally out here saying that, oh, well, like, if you get it, you're gonna like die anyway. I know this is a big deal, blah, blah, blah. And I'm paraphrasing and I'm probably misquoting her. So I'm actually going to either put a transcript or the video of what she said in the, um, oop in this video so you all can see that. Sorry, I'm using my hand sanitizer because I'm a responsible citizen. But um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. So let's just cut to that quickly. Um, yeah, till July sounds like a bunch of I'm sorry, but like, it's a I get it, like, I respect it. But at the same time, like, even if everybody gets it, like, yeah, people are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? 
I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this right now. <laughs> hey guys, so yesterday I did an Instagram live and I realized today that some of my comments are being taken out of context. Um, it's a crazy time. It's a crazy, crazy time. And I am at home and in lockdown. And that's what I hope you guys are doing too. In full quarantine and staying safe and sane. Um, yeah, I don't take the situation lightly by any means. I am home. So stay inside, y'all. <laughs> and then some other celebrities have said some really, really irresponsible things, for God's sake. And then you have a number of people literally saying, oh, I need to have my spring break. I need to like do my spring break, blah, 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 all sorts of because they literally cannot fathom having to stay inside to protect not just themselves though but other people what is crazy to me is the amount of people that are literally ready to put the lives of others on the line for their own selfish reasons like are you out of your mind stay in your house for goodness sake what is wrong with you what is wrong with you like it's disgusting how selfish humanity can be bruv now it's not like i personally don't have stuff that i could be doing but at the same time I recognize what it means for someone to lose their parent, their grandparent, their child, their sister, their brother, because I'm carrying something and I transmit it to them. How would you feel if you were on the receiving end of that kind of an affliction? How would that make you feel if you had to bury your child prematurely because somebody could not sit at home to protect the people around them? It's absurd, it's absurd. And what is so disturbing is that people are literally spitting in the faces of healthcare providers who are putting their lives on the line every blessed day to keep you alive why for why for what so y'all there are a number of medical practitioners that have passed due to coronavirus but i didn't feel it was respectful or appropriate to show their faces so i just want to highlight their stories a little bit and i'll provide sources down below <laughs> Why can't you put your selfish desires aside for their sake? There are so many people that have become martyrs. Martyrs because they're tirelessly working against all odds to save people that don't appreciate them. Why? For what? This is not as simple as, oh, you know, I'm young and my immune system is not compromised. I'm healthy. I'm not going to die from this. No, because it's almost as if it's picking off people at random. Yes, older people are more susceptible to passing from this. Yes, that is definitely a fact. However, there are young people with a clean medical history that are literally dying from. And you're there saying, oh, I'm young. It won't touch me. Statistically speaking, it's less likely to touch you. But statistically speaking, it could still actually you for no reason. So even if you don't care about anyone else, don't you care about yourself? God, personally, I'm just so disgusted by the behavior that some people are exhibiting, especially when there are lives at stake. There are people putting their lives on the line for your sake. And there are people out there working to provide you with food, with water, with the things that you need to stay in your house, putting themselves on the line because they don't have the luxury of being inside their homes. What the hell is wrong with people, for goodness sake? To all of you watching this, they're actually staying inside your homes. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for actually being compassionate enough to take that time and do your part. To those of you that are complaining, that are bitter, that think this is a joke, it's not a joke. People's 
children, people's brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers are dying. People's lovers are dying for no reason. In Italy, the death toll is insane. And in the US, the numbers keep rising and rising and rising. Sorry, I had to fix up a little bit. But um, anywho, it's just disappointing, y'all. It's disappointing and it's so sad. And I'm, I personally am very hurt by the fact that so many people are losing their lives. I hear from my friends every day what they're enduring on the front line as medical professionals, as doctors, as nurses. And it's just, it's not cute, nor is it fun to see two or three people die every single day because of something that could have been prevented, because of something that we can flatten curve wise if we stay in our houses. Anyway, y'all, I just hope this message doesn't fall on deaf ears. It's so heartbreaking. It's so heart wrenching having to see some of my friends bury their parents because other people just again can stay inside their homes. We're here now and what we can do to make this better is to stay home to practice good hygiene, to sanitize, to wear masks, to flatten this curve. You may get COVID-19, you may get it and you won't die from it. But if you transmit it to your grandmother, your mother, your father, your child, your brother, your sister, they could die from it. They could. With that being said, I'd like us to continue this conversation in the comments down below. Share your conspiracies with me, actually. I've been hearing a lot of crazy stories. I've been hearing a lot of crazy-ish. Share those conspiracies, y'all. I want to hear more about them. Um, talk to me. Talk to everyone else. Encourage each other, please. This is a difficult time for all of us, and we literally can't get through this if we don't actually work together. So with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching my video. <sighs> Again, please be sure to comment down below, share your thoughts with me. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, let YouTube know that this kind of content cannot be hidden. No matter how many advertisers don't want to see this, we want to see this and we need to encourage each other. Please be sure to share this video with everyone because I don't know that YouTube is going to favor this video because obviously it's pretty controversial. But we need to talk about these things openly as a global society so that we can move past them. And last but never ever least, subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. Now if you've made it this far, you know the drill. Drop a blue emoji of your choice down below and tell me one thing you took away from this video as you're dropping the blue emoji. I love you all. Please stay safe, stay well, and let's work together to beat this and flatten the curve.